Steve Malsberg show. Um, football. We're getting closer to the kickoff of the regular season in the NFL. I was at the uh, first Jets preseason game. I guess uh, this week will be two weeks ago. Thursday will be two weeks ago already. Got to stand behind the Jets bench in a special section, uh, the coaches section, Toyota coaches section. That, that uh, amazing. Not only do you stand behind the bench when you, if you want. Otherwise, you go up to your 50-yard line seats, about 10 rows from the field. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, all the food you could eat throughout the whole game and for an hour after the game. And I mean all the food you could eat. Now, I have to thank my dear friend uh, uh, for those tickets, and I did. I won't give you his name. Nonetheless, my son and I had a great time. But here's what I want to talk about. Last night on ESPN. It was uh, Monday Night Football? Yeah, Monday Night Football, I guess. The Washington Redskins and the Cleveland Browns in a preseason game. A couple of things of note. One, when the Redskins took the field before the game, they had their hands up. And you know why they had their hands up. They had their hands up uh, for Michael Brown. Now, I, I got I to tell you, Ladies and gentlemen, Trayvon Martin was not shot because he had a hoodie. Just wasn't. He was shot because he was bashing somebody's head against the, the, the ground and the concrete and broke his nose and was perceived by the man who was getting beaten up as a threat. He, not because he had a hoodie. Um, I don't know what's going to happen because we don't know the facts here. But there are, as far as we do know, as far as we've heard, only a few people who have said that Michael Brown had his hands up, because don't forget, there are also peop same people who, some of the same people who said he was shot in the back, yet we've heard from a St. Louis Dispatch reporter that there are 12 witnesses, whether this is true or not, I don't know, who stand behind what the cop has said, reportedly. And what the cop has said, reportedly, according to those familiar with the report, is that Michael Brown was charging this police officer after he punched him in the nose, grabbed for his gun, the gun went off, he ran away, he said, you're not going to shoot me, he came back charging at him, and the cop shot him. So for the Washington Redskins or anybody, I could see the protesters at the scene, but for the Redskins to be doing this, what if it didn't happen that way? Now, jo Johnny Mizell, the quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, rookie, you know all about him, Johnny Football, the whole thing. He ran out of bounds by the Redskins bench during the course of the game. I want to roll this, keep my mic open. And apparently he got a hard time from some of the Redskins, and we blurred his finger. It's the same thing over and over. Keep watching. He gave the Redskins bench the finger, the middle finger, as he left their sidelines where he ran out of bounds, and I guess they said something to him. This is, this is inexcusable. He is so foolish to do this. He's done nothing yet in the NFL. And to do this, to show how thin-skinned you are, before you've even played a, a regular season NFL game, what do you think they're going to start doing to him? What do you think they're going to start shouting at him and calling him? And, 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 and if he showed, I don't know what they said to him. I don't care what they said to him. You put the ball down and you run back to your huddle. You don't give the finger. Now, he's going to be a target even if he didn't do that. But if I'm the opposing team and he reacts this way, for, for, for what, what could they have said to him? Well, I would tell every team in the league what they said to him, and I would, I would, I would say it to him over and over and over again, and worse. Got to be kidding. Immaturity, first-class immaturity. Terrible. Shame on him. All right, folks, we're coming back with author and professor of history and public affairs at Princeton University, Julian Selizer. But first, this hour's America's Moment takes a look back at the death of Osama bin Laden. In the early morning hours of May 2nd, 2011, the Central Intelligence Agency launched Operation Neptune Spear, 
and set into motion a mission to bring one of the world's most notorious terrorists to justice. All indications were that Osama bin Laden was asleep as the U.S. Naval Special Warfare Development Group, known as SEAL Team 6, approached his highly secured three-story Pakistani-based compound. From entry to exit took approximately 45 minutes, with the bulk of time being used to gather up a plethora of Al-Qaeda intelligence materials. When located in his living quarters on the third floor of his compound, the head of the Islamist group Al-Qaeda was found using his young wife as a shield. The Obama administration reported the 54-year-old terrorist was given a traditional Islamic burial at sea. Nine years, seven months, and 21 days following his infamous attack on New York's Twin Towers, killing thousands of innocent civilians, its mastermind Osama bin Laden was dead. You're watching An American Moment on Newsmax TV.